So PS Play is a hugely popular Android app for PS5 Remote Play that's just been released for the RG Ally. Let's go through the six easy steps to get this set up and optimized correctly, including controller mapping that also works for all Windows based handhelds like the Legion Go 2. Plus we'll answer the two biggest questions I had going into this, which is does it use the native RG Ally controls and is it better than the awesome PS5 Remote Play app that so many of us use called Chiaki. So let's dive straight in and for step one, let's download the PS Play app by heading to streamingdv.com link in the description. Now we can try out a demo first if you want to by downloading that here and to buy the app does have a one-off cost of 12.99 euros or which works out to almost 14 US dollars and from the buzz online over these past few days it does seem worth it if you do do a lot of PS5 remote play. I'm going to buy it so I will click purchase license. We just fill in our card details here and it's crucial we carefully enter our email address here as our license key will be linked to this. So I've just purchased my license key, this pop-up appears directing us to download the latest PC version of PS Play, so let's click the link. Here is a great overview of all the key features of the app including advanced decoding and rendering, which should enable a fantastic PS5 remote play experience. So now let's download the PS Play underscore portable file, which at the time of recording is 1.0.0. For step two, let's launch and activate the app by heading to where we downloaded it, which in my case is the downloads folder. Let's click on it and then extract it, press OK. I'm going to cut and paste it to where I want to store the file, which I'm going to select the documents area, open the folder and click the .exe file. So I've purchased a license, so let's click the activate license button. And this is where we enter the email address we used when purchasing it and the license key they sent to this email address. An important note here, which is make sure you enter the dashes within the license key. Otherwise you keep getting an error message like I did. So now PS Play is activated. For step three, let's register our console by clicking this register new PS button. Select your console, which in my case is a PS5. Now let's start our PS5 console and head to settings, then go to system, head to the remote play section, click on link device. Make sure you keep this screen on during the registration process. This is very important. And enter this code into the PS Play app where it says registration number. Let's now click on this open PSN login website. Here let's enter our PSN ID, email and password. And it will open up a blank white screen. So open up the Ally keyboard, press copy. This will store it here. Select the PSN login redirect URL area. Again, open the Ally keyboard and click this area of the keyboard to paste it in. Now, the first time I did this, it came up with this PS5 not found error message. And this is because we only have 240 seconds to do this process. So I would highly recommend having your PSN ID and password at the ready. I redid this process again, but much quicker this time and got the registration successful confirmation. Yes. And remember, we only need to do this this one time. So now let's select our PS5 console to remote play to, which in my case is this one. Ooh, and this is interesting as we get the option of local or remote connect. And I'm going to do a vid soon on whether we can do PS5 remote play away from home using this app. So make sure you're subscribed for that. I'm going to select local connect as I'm here on my home Wi-Fi. And here we go. We are now remote playing to our PS5 console. And this has answered my first question going into this, which is that we can use the onboard RG Ally controls, which is amazing. And can I just say as well that this feels super responsive and really snappy going through the PS5 menu. I'd say more so than the PlayStation Portal and even the Chiaki app, which is an incredibly encouraging sign that this new PS Play app could be the very best way to remote play yet. For step four, let's now configure PS Play by first pressing the command center button, then end task to exit out. And now let's head to the main settings cog icon. In streamer, make sure the 1080p resolution is selected. In the FPS section, make sure 60 is chosen. For the bitrate mode, feel free to keep it auto or you may want to experiment. For example, I've seen online that a lot of people are finding 25,000 seems to be the optimal setting. So I'm gonna select this and try this out. I want the app to automatically connect to my PS5 console. So I will tick this and the other options are personal to your personal choice. 
In the video section, in the video decoder box, make sure this is set to Vulkan. In the video rendering engine, ensure Vulkan compatibility is selected and make sure the HEVC decoder box is ticked and we're all good. The final area is on screen. Make sure we tick the start in full screen mode and also keep device awake to make sure our screensaver we may have doesn't come on. For step 5, let's add the PS Play app to our game library in Army Crate by first pressing the Add button, then press the LB button, go to where you install the PS Play app, which in my case was Documents, click on the folder, click on the .exe file, make sure it's ticked, press Done and it now appears in our game library. And finally for step 6, let's map the controls. And we can see in the PS Play app settings under keyboard that the PS button is set to control and the touchpad is set to B. Let's map these in Armory Crate by opening it up. Head to settings, then in control mode click configure, click configure in game mode. I'm going to select the rear M2 button, click the primary button, select keyboard, select either the left or right control button. Press secondary function, press keyboard, either left or right control, and our PS button is now mapped here. Let's now press M1, then primary button, go to keyboard, select B, select secondary function, then keyboard, then B, and now our PS touchpad is now mapped. Let's quickly test these buttons out by opening the PS Play app, selecting our PS5 console, pressing the rear M2 button that now does indeed bring up the PS button which is crucial for PS5 remote play and the rear M1 button is the PS touchpad button which in Fallout 4 swaps between the first and third person modes. And congratulations, you are now fully set up for PS5 Remote Play using this new PS Play app. And can I ask a small favour in that if you've learned something from this tutorial, then hit the like button and also subscribe if you're new to the channel to help the channel reach 6,000 subscribers before the end of May. Thanks so much. So let's get some first impressions of the PS Play app and just a quick note in that I'm going to head into the AMD app and turn off fluid motion frames. Let's head into the app, select the PS5 console and let's start with the game of the moment Fallout 4. I've just discovered by the way that hitting the RG Allies touchscreen is the PS touch bar button and you can see here I've just swapped between third and first person. Well I don't know about you but this feels so responsive, it looks absolutely gorgeous and there is absolutely zero stutter or lag. I've got to say that I'm already just completely blown away with this PS Play app. And let's take a look at EA Sports FC24, a game that's decent using Checky and Checky for Deck PS5 remote play apps, but really does suffer on the PlayStation portal due to lags and general lower visual quality. But again, just super impressed with the experience here on the PS Play app, it feels fast, fluid, and the tiny players on the pitch really do look superb. So my early impressions are overwhelmingly positive. If you use Chaki Lowe's then I think that this PS Play app is a must have. I may actually beat Chaki as the best way to do remote play to our PS5, but I'd love to hear what you think so do let us know in the comments. And as a thank you for watching right to the end of the video, I'd love to share this awesome quote. Your past is not a life sentence, it doesn't define who you are today. So keep the wisdom, remember the lessons, leave the rest. Don't stay stuck, keep going. So many of us have had really tough childhoods or negative experiences in our past, but we don't have to allow them to hold us back from the incredible future ahead of us. So stay encouraged today guys. And check this video out if you've just got an RG ally and want to know the seven things to do first. I appreciate every single one of you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.